How are you again, everybody? Um, this is Joseph, and this is um, actually a request that I had to show the schematics so that the viewers understand what I'm referring to. So I'll show you each page, but there are about 30, 40 pages actually for Fords. Um, a lot of sections and a lot of um, schematics. So I just wanna show you, this is the overall view. And just to look at it, you see how complicated it is without me instructing or giving uh, guidance. But uh, two questions to go over two questions. One person asked me, obviously this is a fuse. When you go to the fuse box, how do you know which fuse is connected to B plus? And how do you know which side is connected to whatever it's connected to? In this case, the module. Um, when you're checking the fuse, <clears throat> your main concern is to make sure that the fuse is good and you're getting 12 volts. So it's not really that relevant which side is connected to B plus or which side is connected to whatever the circuit. The circuit because, after all, you're just trying to establish voltage from one point to another point. However, if you do want to find out which side, let's say in this side, is connected to obviously the battery, you take a you do continuity, but you have to remove the battery. You cannot measure continuity with power connected. You have to take out the battery terminal. So if you want to make sure, let's say I go to the fuse panel. Obviously, there's two sides to the fuse. I'm going to go to one side of the fuse, any side that is, and I'm going to measure continuity, let's say to the positive of positive cable going to the battery if that side doesn't give me continuity i'm going to go to the other side of the fuse and the other side should give me continuity one of the sides should give me a, a connection to the battery and the other side means that it's going to the circuit that's how you figure it out other thing is when when we go to this is a schematic for electronic clusters for the instrument clusters you see how complicated it is so just going through these things, just showing you, I really don't know how much it's, it's going to help. But anyway, these are the schematic. These are the sensors, obviously, going in to the PCM. See all the sensors? Oxygen sensors, they're inputs. Anyway, getting to, to the point of someone who asked me about, this is also, this is body control module. See? Actually, the lighting control module for Fords. And I'm showing you the whole thing. But as you can see, this is what's going on. This is what's contained in it. This is for the cluster. The instrument panel. But these are the pages. And there's much more. Anyway, I was asked a question about the ignition switch. When they show you the the contact to this switch right now there's one two three four five terminals that it could be connected to the dots represent a terminal the contact or the switch is the making the contact to to this so the first one if you go from here it'll be if you go from here it's called accessories that terminal the one that this one is connected to right here will be the lock position the next one the off position the next one the run position and the last one will be the start position so five different possible selects with the key representing five terminals but the thing is just because the schematic tells you right now let's say for example this is in the lock position as you can see doesn't mean when this is in the lock position i'm going to have current no you have to figure out when will i have a connection when it's in the accessories when it's in the run position when it's in the start position if i'm dealing with the starter as we did in the other one, I have to be in the start position. Now, the schematic will not tell you or will not show you the contact to the start position. You have to try to figure this out. That's the difficulty. If I just want to turn on, let's say, the radio or uh, the radio or the, uh, or the, yes, the radio, or sometimes the radio can go by itself, actually. I want to turn on the accessories. Well, I put on accessories. The schematic won't tell you you're putting it on accessories. You have to figure it out. So this is this part, as you can see. 
Now comes the other part. See how difficult it is? And I'm just showing you the basic what the viewer asked. See? And this is just for for reference, if you want to have this schematic, if, if you're working on a Ford, like I said, 2000, 2003, 2004, they're practically the same. So we're going to get to this part. And this is, again, this is the PCM. So if you want to use this as a reference, like I said, this is for the engine. And it's about 30 more pages. This is the one I discussed about uh, the headlamps. So, this is, we've talked about the generator alternator. Engine performance again, <clears throat> as you can see, sensors. Whenever you see a PCM, you're going to be surrounded by sensors as inputs, giving it information. These are coils. So, uh, to me, it really doesn't give, give too much help doing this but anyway that's what i was asked if you want the schematic as a reference like i said maybe i'll go on the computer if i get a good uh photography and i'll give you all the pages but there's about 40 50 pages for these things and um it's hard to go over every, every single make or model but the point i was trying to make about the alternator is the computer controls the alternator this is not like 20 30 years ago the computer has a command to give the alternator not just to not you have to make sure of two two things this is um very important that i told um that i was asked about it's, it's not only important to make sure that the alternator has the voltage constant at all times by the regulator you also want to make sure that the output has a current whenever you turn an accessory on that's telling me the computer gave a command the alternator listened to that command and, re and is responding and it's giving out more current. Then I know the computer did its job. I know the alternator did its job. If I have no current output, let's say I turn on the blower motor, I turn on the, the fan, whatever it is, right? And I have no current. It's still at 10 amps. It didn't go high to 20 amps or 30 amps. Something is wrong. I go and I say, okay, is the computer giving a command? If the computer is giving a command, is the alternator responding. Then you go into waveforms and things like that. But it's not just enough to go and put a scanner on it, in my opinion, to put a scanner in, and the scanner will say, doing alternator test, fine, passed. That's not enough for me. I want to see current flow out of that alternator, out of that B-plus cable going back, to the ca going back to the battery. Anyway, like I said, these are these this is what I was talking about. This should always go up. There's two things to it in the alternator. The current should go up when you put the accessories. Number one. But the other extreme, when I turn off the accessories, I turn off the lights, I turn off the blower motor, I turn off the radio, I turn off the power seats, right? Then when that happens, the current should go down also. You have to look for both criteria. It should go up. And also, it should go down. That tells me the computer is doing its job. This alternator is responding to it by giving me the proper current and the proper level of voltage. It should always be the same. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.